Hey there lovely people, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love and welcome to my channel. For today's project, I'm gonna be working on this mid-century modern piece of furniture that Mr. M picked up for very little whilst I was away on my travels in America teaching. And when I saw it, I thought, oh dear, this is not the piece of furniture for me. Not only because of its shape, I mean, I love mid-century modern furniture, but in my opinion, it really looks best as is. And I know many other people feel the same way about mid-century modern furniture. People kind of get a little bit prickly when they see um, this type of furniture painted over, and I completely get it. But on closer inspection of this piece, it's not without its flaws. It's got a few issues. The veneer is super thin. It's worn away around the edges of the drawer. If I'm to take a sander to this to bring back that beautiful tiger stripe timber, I'm probably gonna lose the veneer anyway. It's gonna go down into the chipboard and it will look dreadful. So it is unfortunately gonna be a paint job due to all of its issues. And I love painted furniture, but it sometimes doesn't kind of relate well on this type. Nevertheless, I am going to do something very different to this. I'm gonna use a transfer, which I've not used in many years. It's a beautiful transfer by IOD. And I think I can kind of give it its mid-century modern look with a kind of vintage vibe. The two things connecting together. Let's hope it works. Let's take a closer look at the project. Before I start applying paint and the transfers to this piece, I just want to take you through some of my ideas for the overall look of this piece. Uh, and before I do that, I've got to point out that I've got a fix up here. This piece of wood at the top is disconnected from the side. There is a support that runs laterally from side to side so I can um, pilot hole and screw into a bit of glue. That's a fix done, ready to keep this piece in good shape. Also, I have to point out the, I don't know whether you can see here on the edges, this is where the veneer is super thin and it's worn away, which will tell me if I hit it with the sander, pretty much, especially the corners, I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna go into the chipboard and it's gonna ruin the tiger stripe veneer, hence why it's getting a paint makeover. The overall look, I'm looking at the structure of this piece and it's kind of divided. The top drawer, top two drawers are in this own little aperture and then the bottom four, again, are on their own. So I'm thinking something different here to here, using maybe on the lower half sort of an inspired mid-century modern colour, something quite zesty and sharp as a background colour before the transfers go over the top. Um, maybe a neutral here and then encapsulating it all with a satin paint, maybe one of Annie's blacks, maybe graphite or Athenian black might look good. Maybe Athenian black, just to make all of the focus and attention to the artwork that's gonna sit in these overall panels on the drawers. The handles, they're pretty good. I quite like the shape. I kind of think they need to stay. I'm not so keen on the back plates we'll maybe remove them and just use the handles and freshen them up.
top two drawers, I decided to give my base coat of Country Grey. I will give this a second pass with Country Grey and Old White. I want it to kind of look very papery. I've got another idea in mind for the top two drawers. The lower four drawers, this is the design that I will be using, the Iron Orchid design um, tra transfer. It is full of lovely warm colours, things like Scandinavian pink in these lovely cabbage roses. There's a, a, a lovely sort of earthy, um, mustardy colour in some of the leaves. And um, this is how it looks on the back. There's the design, eight sheets of this transfer that all interconnect. Lovely sort of um, olive tones. There's some oranges in there. There's some really good tones. So for the bottom half of this, I've decided to go for a colour that's similar to this sort of mustardy tone, which I kind of think is a very mid-century modern tone, but it's also very vintage, somewhere in between. Now, how I've mixed that, I've used, um, and this is what I've come up with. I don't know if you can see. It's kind of a lovely um, mustardy yellow. And believe it or not, this is a mix of furl and paprika. So you can just see on the outside there, furl and paprika needs mixing in a little bit better. Um, and all I've done is dumped a little bit of furl. The main body of the colour is furl, which is quite a yellowy green. And then I've just put a dash of paprika orange in there, which then makes it go to uh, more of a mustardy shade, which I absolutely love. I think this is going to be gorgeous against the black background. So this is going to be my base colour. I may add other nuances of colour over the top. I'm not too sure yet. I'm just going to see how this looks across the drawer fronts. <laughs> Well, after a slow start with this project, I can finally see my way forward. I'm super happy with the colour choices. So at the top, we have country grey and a touch of old white blended together. I'm going for a papery kind of finish. There's going to be a few more techniques that sit across those two drawers with a bit of design work on them. The lower colour, what can I say? 
Phil and Paprika Red. Now I've used this combination in so many different ways. So the more Paprika Red that you put in this, you will end up with a terracotta, a natural sort of earthy, orangey tone. But in this case, I've used more Phil and a touch of Paprika and ended up with this beautiful, deep mustard shade, a golden mustard shade, which is awesome. Yes, guys, I didn't measure, I just threw them in. So quite a lot of fur and then a dash of um, paprika red, and you should end up with this beautiful golden. Um, I was gonna add a touch of shading around these drawers in olive, just to kind of draw your eye in. I've decided to scrap the idea. The um, transfers will go over tomorrow once this is dried really well, and then I may add paint over the top of that. Haven't decided yet. Just depends on the spacing and how it looks with the background colour. But all it's left to do for me this evening is go in with a coat of satin paint to the outside of this cabinet. I've decided to go with Athenian Black and I'm going to use a brush to apply that. Probably it will take two coats with a brush, three with a roller. Um, if you are going to use a brush, don't panic. It is self-leveling. Just make sure you don't over agitate the paint. Apply it, smooth it out with your brush and you should end up with a seamless finish. So let's get stuck in with taking the drawers out, storing them safely on the other side of the workshop, painting the outside of the carcass, ready for all of the creative stuff a little later on. It's now day two of my project. I woke up early into the studio. I've given the carcass another coat of Athenian black satin paint. It's looking pretty sharp. And now I'm on with the um, transfers and working out my layout. So what I would say is on the back of the packaging, you can see here, there are several, um, there are eight altogether in the pattern and they all interconnect with one another with a wavy line so you can line them up across 
your project. But I'm not gonna use it in that way. I'm gonna reformulate my own design by placing these on the outer edge of my drawers, kind of making sure that I'm happy with the overall scape. So I want to leave a little bit of dead space in the center. And also I've had another rethink on um, now that I've seen them open, a rethink on my background colour. I absolutely love this shade and I want it to be in the project, but I've decided to go back to my original idea of kind of adding some blending and some toning, almost adding um, some depth of field to the overall image. So I'm going to use the colours that I see in the overall image but I'm going to um, pare them down a little bit, kind of neutralise the shades. For instance, this bright orange, I'm going to make a dull orange and I'm going to highlight as if there is something in the distance which resembles what's in the overall image, if that makes sense. Just so that you fall into the overall image and it all looks very hand painted. So you're going to just watch and see what I do to create this overall look. These are going to be my inspiration. I'm going to leave them to one side and kind of paint branches, oranges, um, loose sort of roses in the distance, a little bit smaller than the overall um, images. That will carry the image a little bit further into the background. Still using the um, background colour because I do love this shade, um, but I'm going to add a touch of olive, graphite on fleur, the original shade, a touch of green um, and basically make it dark around the edges and then a little bit looser to the middle, adding a touch of all of these shades. Thank you. 
I wait for the paint to dry on the lower four drawers. There's a couple of things that I wanted to note um, at this stage just to help you guys out. So you may have seen me um, put the drawers back in when I begun to paint the project and I mask and tape the edges so that I wouldn't get the wooden trim. The reason I like to do that is so I know that all the drawers are in the correct position. And as I remove the drawers, I then number them, in this case, one to six from top to bottom. So I know that each drawer will go back in place. You don't want to get caught out with your pattern all being jumbled up. So the top two drawers, I've got, um, I'm gonna show you one half. In this transfer, there is a beautiful motif that I'm gonna carefully cut away from the pattern. And I'm gonna use that in its solid in the center of these two drawers. Also, I'm taking inspiration from the background. This is why I went for country gray and old white. It looks kind of papery with age marks in there, speckles. Um, so I'm gonna use fly spec. Also, I'm gonna mix a color wash with Enfleur and a touch of graphite. I'm gonna offload that with a sponge to create beautiful natural patina. Um, I'm going to mix the paint, about 40% paint to 60% um, water. I'm also going to wet the surface, so it is going to be really a mild kind of colour wash. And whilst it's still wet, I'm going to mix up the reverse 60% paint to 40% water and flick it with the brush. And hopefully that should just embed in. Anything that I'm not too sure about, I'll just offload it with the sponge. Before I proceed with my application of transfer, just a quick note, I'm applying a top coat of Annie Sloan Matte Lacquer, very thin coat. The transfers tend to like super sleek surfaces. Um, it depends on which paint you're using as well. If you've got a paint with an inbuilt top coat, then you're good for application straight off. 
You can also apply the um, transfers directly into unfinished chalk paint, but you do need to allow a long period of drying time. And probably I would advise to burnish the surface with a cloth just to make sure that the transfer will get great adhesion.
As I near the end of this project, I forgot to press record on the very final bit of footage, and that was the waxing of the drawer fronts. I just used Annie Sloan clear wax over the top of the um, lacquer and the transfer on the drawer fronts. This is just to give it a soft luster, which works really, really well with the beautiful eggshell finish of the satin paint. And as you can see, I'm reapplying the handles, which I did try to clean and they didn't come up too well. So I went in with some spray paint, three colors. I used um, gold, a brown and a black spray paint over the hardware and they've come up a pretty penny. I'm really happy with how they look with the overall project. Don't forget guys, if you've enjoyed watching this transfer project, be sure to like and subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you feel about painting over mid-century modern furniture. I'm pretty happy with this, at least it's going to have another life onwards from here on in. I'll catch you all very soon. <laughs>